Welcome to Noble Inn, the perfect place to end your day. If you are looking for that home away from home, look no further. We have two different room layouts that provide a perfect fit. Our studio rooms provide everything you need in a compact one room layout. Simple, cozy, and efficient. Need a little more space? Our one bedroom suites offer more of an apartment setting. We also include complimentary laundry rooms located on the second and third floors. Our courtyard and barbecue grill is also included and is open on a first come first serve basis. Need to work off those hot dogs and hamburgers? We have a fitness center located on the first floor, always available when you need it. Need to relax with a cold beer or a glass of wine? Our pub, located downstairs, is open Monday through Saturday and is a great place to relax or socialize with other guests. Please give us a call today at 701-837-1500. Noble Inn, the perfect place to end your day. In action. Hey, I can't wait to go to my favorite bar. Let's go. Come on in, guys. Oh, wait. I own this place. I own this horse. It's awesome. Come on. We got free popcorn. Pickles. Pickle eggs. Koozies. Wine. Piano. More wine. Yeah, 16. Ready? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fifty, sixteen. Han Solo. Awesome. Come on. Record player. Jukebox. Empty cake. And the art wall. Hello, good night live from the Blue Rider. Have a great night. And cut. <laughs> You're locked in. The clock is ticking. The key is in your head. Solve your way out of a jam with family and friends as you decipher clues to freedom at Escape Point, Minot's only escape room experience. Reserve your session today. Well, as you know, my name is Terry Efforts, and I have been part of this show since the beginning. I am an attorney down in Bismarck. I am best known for my future case, the North Dakota Tax Department versus Jake Thrillkill. But really, though, obviously, as an attorney, I'm always wrapped up into anything that has to do with the legal community. And as many of you know, RBG recently died. There was one guy who wanted to cheer really loud back here, by the way. Um, I've done a lot of research on RBG, and I have to tell you that I think that this is just one more setback in her career. She's gonna bounce back, don't you worry. We'll hear from her again. Um, so this is our second show, eighth show. We've been doing this for a long time. This is over a year that we've been doing this. And if Jonah would have told me the caliber of people that I'd be working with on a daily basis to put this together, I would have immediately told him no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So we are a live show. We're a traditional late night show. How many of you guys have been to a taping of a late night show like Letterman or Leno or anything like that? No? Okay. So it, it's kind of awkward. You are the audience. You are recorded as our live audience. So when somebody comes out, you have to clap for a really long time until they sit down. And it just seems a little awkward. So we're going to practice clapping like we're five years old. On three, I want to hear it. One, two, three. That's way better than I thought, but you guys are probably drinking more than our normal crew, so I like that. I like that. Um, 
If you've been to our previous shows, you know that we normally have VIP tables set up in the front, but we've changed a little bit of everything because of COVID, so we put the VIP tables up top at this venue. Let's hear it from the VIP tables. We mostly put them up there because they're always just looking down on us anyway, but that's, that's how it goes. If you guys are interested in these VIP tables at our next show, we're, we're not quitting anytime soon. COVID's not gonna stop us. So if you guys need a VIP table, talk to Jonah. He's at the merch table right now. Speaking of merch, we actually have an amazing deal. If you go back there and spend $130 and get one of everything, you get a ticket to the next show. We also have our lighters on sale for $3 tonight as well. And uh, Jonah is known to show some skin if you, show, if you spend enough money, just so you know, if that helps or hurts. What, what was that? Oh, you just bought a Speedo. As long as it's not Vodka Mike and a Speedo, we'll be all right. Everybody loses when Vodka Mike's in a Speedo. Or not in a Speedo, to be honest with you. Um, I'd also like to point out that we have uh, the reincarnate of Janis Joplin if she showed up at a concert but didn't have a gig. She's sitting here in the front row. You probably saw her dancing with everybody earlier. No idea I'm talking about her right now either, on the phone with somebody. Just call her Janice for the rest of the night and she'll get it, guys. She'll totally get it. Oh, there it is. Let's hear it for Janice. Somebody take her keys from her, would you? Please, please. Um, as always, we could not do this show without our sponsors, and we have some amazing sponsors. Escape Point, they were great. We went in and filmed some of our material at Escape Point, and uh, I will tell you this, they are on par with any big city escape room that I have also never been to. <laughs> By the way, I am from Bismarck. It's nice to come back to Minot. However, Bismarck does not have a mask mandate right now. So I took my time, I did my due diligence, I read the rules of the mask mandate for Minot. And as none of your attorney, I'm gonna say that there is a clause in there that says you do not have to wear your mask if you're actively drinking. This is a glass of Glenlivet neat, by the way, in case you were wondering. Um, please tip your bartenders and your waitresses tonight. They're gonna do a lot of work because you're, you're, gonna, need to, you're gonna need some booze to get through this, you guys. And uh, speaking of the O, this is my first time in the new O original. And I gotta say, it's a good improvement, however, I kind of miss the smell of sweaty punks that have been plastered all over the walls. You know, it's just, it's a little too new. The, the paint looks so fresh, it's, it's kind of jarring. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy to be here nonetheless. One of our other sponsors tonight is the Blue Rider, who encourages the sweaty punks to wipe themselves on the walls. So it's perfect, it's really fantastic. We'd also like to thank the Noble Inn. I'm actually staying at the Noble Inn since I'm from out of town. For some reason, they offered me an hourly rate when I arrived. I'm not sure what that's about, but I figured it was for young professionals, so I went with it. I went with it. I used it. You guys met the Epstein refugees from the band, so you know. You know. Um, speaking of the band, which is great, we actually have some younger people in the band and they have volunteered to be the DD for their parents to get home tonight. You can't make this shit up, folks. You can't make it up. The bass player will be giving his mother a ride home, and she already invited anybody else who needs a ride to jump in. Just don't touch his bass. Don't touch his bass. Eric Anderson, everybody, he was up here earlier. He came out with his cello and he sat down. I'm just gonna tell you, he's not the first, he's not the first bass player I've known that has to sit down to perform. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been here, if you haven't, our team can actually help you with whatever you have going on. If you have events that are going on, if you need our help with media, please reach out to us. Get a hold of Jonah. Uh, we don't sell our VIP tables online. We only do it through our crew. So get a hold of him if you want to be a bougie asshole like these guys up here later. The perks are usually some sort of meal so that we guarantee that you're not the first one to black out, but you might be. And some drinks. And the clout of being the Minot Bourgeois, if you're into that, if you're into that. But again, let us know if you need anything. We've got merch back there. I'm gonna get off the stage. Everybody remember that this is a live show. You are a part of this live show. Please let us know if you're enjoying the show through your laughter. And we'll get started in just a few minutes. That's my time. Thank you, everybody. Welcome back to your late night show, Good Night Live. What do you think of our new venue? The, yes, let's hear it for the O. The brand new original bar and nightclub. New venue this time. What? Yeah. Yeah. Austin, we, we changed venues, and you're literally playing on stage here at the original. All right. And hey, anybody who needs to use the restroom or anything like that, the original is still 98% STD free. We know who you are. It is nice to know that. And it is pretty cool, though, being on this big-time rock and roll stage. Uh, yeah, um, well, do you think your mangy groupies from the landing came with you this time? Well, hey, they probably shared a lift with some of your ditzy groupies from Ebbs. But, hey, that's assuming they know how to work a smartphone. <laughs> but speaking of groupies, we have something new and fun here at Good Night Live. It's a comment box, and seriously, we want your opinion. Unless it sucks. Then you can just shove it in your ballot box. Our comment box is back at the merch table, and hey, your comment or idea could appear on our next show. So what kind of comments are you looking for, Jake? Like Something about your caterpillar eyebrows, or something um, maybe just about the state of the world today? Yeah, I mean, we're looking for comments or compliments on really anyone or anything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But hey, Miles, this could be the first time you get something in writing that's not related to a court appearance. Hey, it's a comment. Hey, well, hey, we have the same attorney, so at least we got that going for us. It's a comment box, folks. Have another shot. Use your imagination. It's back at the merch table. But hey, let's start off tonight with some good news. Election season is finally 
almost over. And you know, I miss the good old days of social media. You know, when all I got in my feed was Baby Yoda memes, Chuck Norris jokes, and sex tapes. And yes, I see you out there. And yes, I got it. Nice work. But you know, I think my phone is actually sick of the whole thing too. My spell check keeps changing the word election to either erection or ejection. I mean, honestly, they both seem preferable to voting this year. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I've been waiting for weeks to unload that joke. <laughs> you know, I would hate to be accused of premature ejaculation. Oh! <laughs> ejaculation? I like that. Yeah, it'll be in next year's thesaurus. <laughs> And did you guys know that 40% of Americans get their news from Facebook? Yeah. And about 40% of Americans do not vote in presidential elections. Well, here's to hoping they're the same percent. In politics, man, campaigning gets so nasty. Doesn't it? Police in Maine are looking for a woman who's been putting dog poop in mailboxes with Trump signs. <laughs> I don't know about you, but my first thought was, does Nancy Pelosi have a vacation home in Maine? <laughs> in North Dakota, we have a gubernatorial race in our state this year. Polls have the Republican incumbent, Doug Burgum, at 90% against his Democratic rival, whoever that is. <laughs> I mean, this race is like watching Stephen Hawking in a foot race against Usain Bolt. I mean, it's like watching Danny DeVito play one-on-one -on -one against LeBron James. Seriously, though, it's like watching Ole Larson lose a round of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader to a kindergartner. <laughs> but hey, it is hard to be a Democrat in North Dakota. They, we got some, they're both got here. Over here. They're both here. Oh, you're, admitting, you're admitting it in North Dakota. That's, congratulations. I mean, it is really hard to be a really Democrat hard. in North Dakota. In fact, just last week, a Democrat was found nailed to a tree, stabbed six times, and shot twice. Yeah. State police are saying it's the worst case of suicide they have ever seen. Mm. I hope that joke's still funny next year. But every time we feel bad about something stupid happening in North Dakota, we can always count on our neighbors to the south to do something to make us feel better about ourselves. Case in point, recently the South Dakota Attorney General called 911 while driving home from a fundraiser and reported hitting a deer. The next day, law enforcement found a dead body along the highway. It was not, so he didn't hit a deer? Mm, no, but talk about a speed bump in that guy's reelection. <laughs> All right, all right, enough of the election crap. In Minot News, it's been reported that the murder rate in town is higher than it's ever been in more than 20 years. As a result, four more people are locking their doors at night. Looking at you, KK. And the Minot City Council, they finally made a decision that we can all get behind. They voted to allow the AMC theaters to serve alcohol. I mean, somebody from that theater should be running for Congress. <laughs> but seriously, now the AMC theaters are going to be serving alcohol, which is great because now 
Josh Duhamel movies will actually be watchable. And did you guys see the story about that 13-year-old girl who took down a black bear in Minnesota? She shot a black bear? Yeah. A 13-year-old? Yeah, 13 years old, and she bags a black bear. <laughs> God, Miles, I don't know about you, but when I was 13, all I was hunting for was tube socks and a bottle of Jergens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't act like that so what, wasn't half of you. What are you doing with that? Why did you do that? <laughs> I don't get it. True story, one time. So, you know, the only person wearing more orange than a North Dakota deer hunter right now is running for president. <laughs> That's a true story. So you guys all remember Carol Baskins from The Tiger King? I remember Carol Baskin. Yeah, a couple of them look like they remember. <laughs> so, you know, she was accused of murdering her husband and then feeding him to her tigers. Well, she's not worried, though. It turns out that she's got O.J. Simpson's defense team on retainer. And they've already got their closing argument all set. If he's not in the tigers, shit. You must acquit. You get it? The glove thing? All right. <laughs> Damn it, Jake. Oh, man. That's yeah. fine. Now he's got to have one, That's right? Ridiculous. Well, just be thankful it wasn't you. <laughs> Recently, some Rolling Stones memorabilia sold for nearly $500,000. What's even more impressive is that you all paid $25 to be here tonight. But can you believe it? Half a million dollars for some rock and roll junk. Oh, shit. If you're into that kind of garbage, you can get a copy of Hen House for like 12 bucks. Jake, are you selling bootlegs of my record again? I thought I told you not to do that. It's $14.95 on the website. Or the merch table back there's got all kinds of stuff from Good Night Live, and, and there's a comment box. Like, you can use the comment box. Don't forget to use the comment box, you guys. Comment on Jake's suit, on um, you know how the size of his member looks in the suit, how the belt buckle is, all those things. We want comments for Jake. Seriously, though, folks, it's the merchandise purchases that keeps the Epstein refugees here employed. <laughs> Where's Mike at? <laughs> they get 1% of the merch sales, so yeah. buy them up. So, well, Miles, if you can't get paid selling records, the makers of Top Ramen announced that they're seeking a chief noodle officer. Yeah. Chief noodle officer. Yeah. So this noodle officer would develop and test new flavors of ramen, which will be great for Carson Wentz when he's out of a job next week. Oh. Seriously, Carson, give us a call. We would love to have you on our show. And hey, it looks like you're going to have some free time soon anyways. Yeah, you're not going to be sitting at the, on the bench at the Super Bowl again this yeah, year, right? You can't ride that all the way there, yeah. <laughs> so now, listen, this one is crazy. Did you guys hear about the Karen who ambushed her fiancé while he's working at Target? Yeah? She, she ambushed showed, her husband there? Yeah, she ambushed her, her fiancé at the Target. She showed up there in her wedding dress with a maid of honor and a pastor. And she told him, you marry me right here, right now, or it's over. His first thought was, ma'am, if you're going to be in this line, you got to have 10 red flags or less. <laughs> Did he marry her then? Or? Yeah, you know, Miles, I'm not sure if he married her or not, but... If he uses his red card, he could save 5% on therapy. <laughs> and finally, a bit of international news. Canada's top doctor is telling people to wear a mask during sex to reduce the risk of COVID-19. But I don't know why he thinks this is a problem, eh? Oh. Every, 
everyone knows that doggy style is the preferred position in Canada. You know, so both people can watch the hockey game. He shoots and he scores. You know, that brings a whole new meaning to the word slap shot. Oh. And hey, hey, might even have to call icing on the babysitter after that one. Yeah. Talk about getting nailed to the boards. Oh, yeah. Is, is that about it there, Jake? You got another one in your pocket about that? Or? Yeah, no. I think I'm done. Oh, no, wait. I do love it when a little bit of high sticking leads to some quality time in the penalty box. Okay, Jake, that's enough. Hey, hey, hey. You know, you guys are great. We did a show in the, in the alley with a few hundred people. We did a show in uh, Oak Park with 1,200 people. And you guys are a great, loud audience. Thank you for being with, being with us here at the O. And in return, we have got a great show for you tonight, folks. We also want to say hi to the six people who are watching on pay-per-view at home. Thank you. We've got a sensational show featuring stand-up comedy from budding local comic Kyle Erickson. Plus the, yes, let's hear it for Kyle. Plus the talented, witty, and charming radio personality Ashley Thornburg, host of Prairie Public Radio's Main Street. But first, but first, it is a real treat to introduce Dr. Eric Anderson, professor of music at Minot State University. <laughs> Folks, do not let the cello fool you. Get ready for some face-melting rock and roll. He's performing a tribute to legendary guitarist Eddie Van Halen with Miles and the Sweet Dreams. Take it away, Dr. Feelgood Anderson. They told me after the last show that when I finish a beer, I gotta put it under the desk so I don't look like I drink so much. Is it working? Yeah, is it working? We'll find out. <laughs> Thank you. 
back here singing that song and I'm pretty sure I watched hey. him when he was singing the end of the song Thank wink you. right before he said the last line that he went ah yeah you did that I saw it so man before all of you get a little hot and bothered out there I just want to say that uh, this is Kellen's senior year in high school so <laughs> simmer down a little bit back there but uh, yeah hey that's not your usual night of the symphony Bravo, Dr. Anderson. Eric is sharing, like Miles said. Dr. Anderson is sharing the stage tonight with two of his sons, uh, Eric on the sax and Kellen on trombone and vocals. Eric, what is it like to be sharing some of this stage with your two sons and these other amateurs? <laughs> it's. It, it's the best. It's far better than being up here playing the cello. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, I think most of it is, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, Diane and I both love music, and we both play music, and we do it professionally, and, and we didn't push our kids into it. Mm -hmm. And to see that they fell in love with it on their own, and that they have ability that they kind of, you know, they have abilities that we don't have. I mean, I don't do what they do, and that's really cool. 
So, if if people want to see you guys play as a family affair, can we expect like uh, you know an album coming out as the Andersons, or what are we looking at? We have some Christmas photos I won't mention. All right, I love it. Is that at the merch table too? <laughs> no, the the best place to see us play is uh, in non-COVID times at our house after Minot Symphony concerts. We have a party and basically everyone's invited. Um, a hundred of our closest friends and we have live music till like two or three in the morning and it's great. Well, that's excellent. We look forward to having you back up here to play a little, play a little more again later. So. Thank you. Next up. A fan favorite returns tonight. We've taken you behind the scenes at the writer's table to the Good Night Live Christmas party on my bad date. And now we're going to treat you to our new skitcom episode called There Is No J in Team. So, Sean, what you're saying is, the next time I get pulled over, I can't just give them my mayor's coin? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Jake. It doesn't quite work that way. I'm sorry. Damn it. <laughs> you know, but on the other side of the coin, I'd like to think that the roast was an absolute success. I think my popularity is better now than it ever was before, all in part to Goodnight Live. But that being said, I think your creative team really dropped the ball on you. Miles, I don't think he roasted you one time during the entire roast, and I'm not even sure if Terry Efforts knew that you were on stage. I know. This team is just let down after let down. It's like they don't even know me at all. You know, I just feel like I really need to find a way to connect with them. Well, what I think you need is a team building exercise. And I've got a little bit of experience with this. It wasn't that long ago that I took my team down to Washington. You know what? That's a great idea. This team, oh, they need to get to my level. <laughs> Shit, even the next level. <laughs> team building, that's exactly what we need. You know, and I've got the perfect place for you for team building. It's an escape room in Minot called Escape Point. It does a phenomenal job of bringing everybody together. You know what, and I'll even help set it up for you. An escape room, perfect. You set it up, I'll call a meeting. <laughs> we are doing this. Perfect. You guys, I run late for shit all the time, but I have never called a meeting and left my group hanging for over an hour. What an asshole. Yeah, I don't have time for this shit. I've got a media empire to run, and time is money. It's the same thing every week. Creatives at eight, Mr. Fabulous shows up at nine. Yeah, you know what? Let's just get the fuck out of here. God, wait, just a minute. Jake will be here, I just know it. You just gotta give him another minute. Uh, I'll get us around. Oh, no. Get some pizza, too. Clean up the recycling, folks. I've got an important announcement to make. I drove two fucking hours for a single announcement? Now, I know what you guys think. That sitting around here while Sean Ann guzzles gin and Jonah drinks those juice box beers is how we connect and grow as a team. But I know what we really need. A team building exercise. What the fuck? Don't talk to me about no team building. You're on my team, Jake Thraukill. I built this team. Uh, <coughs> which team has the pizza? Well, I go with whatever team has the booze. And since Vodka Mike isn't here, I'm on Team Tangeray. At a girl. Ooh, Jake, can I be on your team? Guys, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Jonah, you think your one-man show is worth watching? It's not. That's why my name is on the marquee. And ladies, your advanced educations are only matched by your advanced blood alcohol content. And for God's sakes, what kind of team lets a member starve to death? I'm wasting away. Miles, where the hell's the pizza? You're a lawyer. I'm a PhD. Tell me again, why do we listen to this belt buckle with half a brain? Ha, too late. I've already got it set up for this weekend, and you guys are gonna love it. The itinerary is already in your emails.
Welcome to Escape Point, team. Oh my god, are you serious? I know, I know. Pretty cool, right Jonah? Just get on with it, Frog Hill. All the arrangements have already been taken care of. And here's, um, this guy to get us started. Dude, I'm Cameron, the intern. I've worked literally every good night live. Fine, whatever. Kevin here will get us started. Now, get on with it. Whatever, Mr. Throwkill. Everything's all ready to go. For some reason, Vodka Mike got here early. He's passed out in the control room. So, phone's in the basket and follow me. All right. Personal phone. Work phone. This thing, it never rings. Well, looks like you're all set. Good luck, team. Wait, Jake, you can't just shut them in like that. Son, what's your name again? cam er -un. Well, let me tell you about the first rule of team building. You always neutralize the weakest link first. Oh, shit, oh, shit. Yeah. Well, Kevin, it's clear you've been skipping cardio day. Well, I'm telling you, I need to start watching these videos first. They make me look like an asshole. But, hey, my ideas are so great. Oh, and hey, Jonah, is our workers' comp paid up? We still got to settle up with uh, old Kevin's ER visit. <laughs> and doesn't that Blue Rider look great? We had so much fun shooting in there. Thanks to the crew at the Blue for letting us use their bar. And thank you to the Blue for taking care of all of our drinks tomorrow night, right? <laughs> but hey, we'll get to what happens next in this skitcom a little later in the show. But right now, I'm excited to bring tonight's guest to the stage. She's the producer and the co-host for Main Street Show on Public Radio. She strapped herself into a jet-powered U-Haul, co-piloted a stunt plane, Ben pulled over en route to meeting the Prime Minister of Iceland and had a tarantula build a nest in her hair. I wouldn't even let that damn spider near me on our last show. She's got comedy chops too, folks. She told us her bucket list radio interview guest is a mime. Let that sink in. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Goodnight Live stage, Ashley Thornburg. Ashley, uh, we'll pour you some water up here. I don't know why we do that because we just make people drink old Milwaukee. But in case you need to cleanse well, this the palate, is at least a little stronger than an old Milwaukee. Oh, okay. We're gonna start there tonight. Got yeah. it. Uh, here's your old Milwaukee. All right. Oh, comes with a leaf. How fall appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ashley, you've worked at uh, in uh, Prairie Public Radio for about 11 years now. Uh, but before that, you worked in television. So, why radio and not TV? <laughs> um, you heard about the tarantula making a hair yep. nest? Yeah, well this is like, this is the maximum of my hair skills and so radio is just like a lot easier. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, makeup also not my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. I did some makeup once and then my daughter said, did somebody punch you in the face? 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and children are great. Yeah, sometimes. Um, but but seriously, I do love that there is just a different kind of intimacy to radio that you have to fill in different details. Should I be doing something? I think we're going to have to move your mic a little closer to the, your face. Is that right, Bruce? Okay. I, you'd think I would know how to use microphones. How's this? This is not at all embarrassing. I mean, it sounds better when you hold it in place, but... Okay, I'll just uh, kind of hold it. Yeah. yeah. How's okay. that sound? You guys hear all right? All right. Nobody says anything is a Nobody, yeah. pure affirmation of, yeah, we can use no, it. Nobody expected me to be good at microphones. Okay. All right, Joan Alanto, executive dick bag, everybody. <laughs> He doesn't know how a microphone works either. Okay, is this one on? <laughs> oh, I know how to use this one. Okay. All oh, right. Yeah. But yeah, there, there's an intimacy to radio. There's so many more details and different things that you have to pay attention to that you can't leave out mm -hmm. because it's information that people would see, they pick up on TV, and you have to fill in those blanks. And I think you just get a richer picture. Right. So we heard that radio runs in your family, and that radio is kind of the family business. <laughs> Did you always uh, want to be in radio? Uh, no, no. Um, but my mom and dad were both radio producers, and so I rebelled and became a radio producer. Um, <laughs> Turns out I'm not actually all that good at rebellion. Uh, no, I went to school to study um, mass communications. I had a pretty good handle on grammar, and I like writing, I like researching, um, but I don't typically do that kind of writing from scratch. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like to have to come up with something. I want to listen to what anybody else has to say and then work from there, because people are really fascinating. Mm -hmm. So has your family always been supportive of your radio career, or was it more like, you got a face for radio type thing? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you've never heard that before. <laughs> wow. uh, I, have the, I have the makeup and hair skills for radio, for sure. Uh, yeah, I think they were pretty supportive. Mm -hmm. sure, so, why not? <laughs> As the producer and the co-host of Prairie Public's Main Street program, you've got to do a lot of fascinating interviews, including interview Sean Ann and myself, yeah. um, politicians, poets, teachers, inventors, doctors, lawyers, philosophers, stunt plane pilots, me. Uh, but let's cut to the chase here. What was it like to get high with Cheech Marin? <laughs> Cheech, he, he was amazing. That was absolutely one of my favorite interviews. Um, we did not get high. Did um, you do coke? <laughs> no. No, we had a lovely discussion about Chicano art. He is one of the largest collectors of Chicano art, and he was actually starting um, a private collection, donating his private collection to a museum. Oh, excellent. <laughs> That's great. So you didn't actually smoke up with Cheech, but, <laughs> but we did hear that your husband calls you a beer and a half Thornburg. Is that true? <laughs> yes. I'm pretty sure we're married because he always gets an extra half a beer because I just, I'm such a lightweight. Uh, he just, yeah. Gets well, Mr. Thornburg, so tonight's going to be your night. Milwaukee. Yeah, because nobody gets off the goodnight live stage without drinking an old Milwaukee, right, so right. if that's taken care of for you. Mm -hmm. See, you got fans. Or old Milwaukee has fans. Mm -hmm. All right. Zach, are you ready for you the second it. half here? Here you go. Oh, wow. Get started. This is like a year supply for me. Right. So... Another great interview on your resume is the Prime Minister of Iceland. Yeah. How the heck did well, that come? Well, she now come? ranks right below you. What's that? She now ranks right below you. Well, it's good. You know, we can be uh, first and second or 57th <laughs> and 58th, wherever it lands. But uh, how in the heck did that come about, and why were you in Iceland? 
Uh, this actually happened in Mountain, North Dakota, which is a tiny town, 90-some people in the northeast corner, but it is an Icelandic community, and they take a lot of great pride in their Icelandic heritage, and they just said, hey, do you want to come to Mountain? I think since the late 90s, they've had something like 20 sitting foreign dignitaries, Really? And yeah, and, and she said yes, and I saw that on, on Facebook or something where 40% of people get their news. And All right, you listen to the monologue. <laughs> That's better than yeah. half the people here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought someone should listen to yep. you. And I saw that she was coming. I sent a message on Facebook to some people in Mountain, like, hey, can I talk to her? This is crazy. Nobody got back to me, but I still got in the car and had to just do it. Um, I put it off to the last minute. I was so nervous. So I actually was speeding all the way to Mountain. I got pulled over like two miles before my exit. I think I was going 90 on the interstate. Sorry, Dad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was no old Milwaukee involved, I promise. Uh, and he, he pulled me over and he said, you know what you're doing? Yes, I do and I know I shouldn't. And he said, where are you off to? And I said, I'm going to interview the Prime Minister of Iceland. And he looked at me and he said, oh, you're going to the deuce. Which is right. a, that's what they call it, August the Deuce. It's, it's an Icelandic Heritage Celebration Day. And I couldn't believe it. He, let me off. I drove to the city absolutely on fumes because I didn't have time to pull over and get gas, but I know there's only like three roads in this town, so I just thought, well, I'm going to pull over, see if I can meet her, and then she just pulls up in the parade. She's, you know, the first car, I'm sure. Yeah. And then... Parade ended, I walked over to the cafe, and I, I don't know why, but I asked her husband permission. I was like, can I, can I talk to your wife? Like, there was no security. It was insane. Like, I got, you know, patted down coming into here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. <laughs> Temperature yeah, check, anyway. Also, that's not part of what goes <laughs> on at the O, so, yikes. <laughs> so, you know, your first job out of college was teaching English in Paris. Uh, what prompted you to just pick up and move to Paris? Um, chocolate, cheese, wine, uh, all sorts of things. I fell in love with France from a very early age. I uh, actually used to not ever pay attention in church growing up again. Sorry, Dad, I know you're here. Uh, but I used to take the, the church bulletin, and every time they had the word parish, I would just cross out the H, and it was just Paris. Like, okay. that was it. Sounds riveting. Yeah, yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, my mom brought home a picture book from Paris and, and some other books, and I probably shouldn't admit this, but I, I saw a cabaret sort of burlesque dancer and for some reason that image really stuck in my head uh, as I remember the first so time I saw a cabaret Dakota. dancer it stuck <laughs> in my head too <laughs> so you've been teaching English or, or you may have been teaching English in yes. Paris but you still had to have moments where you were speaking in French did you have yeah. anything good that was lost in translation while you were teaching <laughs> I did accidentally tell a few of my students uh, who were a particularly devout family of the Islamic faith um, that American bread is full of condoms. Oh, like a prophylactic. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so there's this thing. Does that rise well while baking? <laughs> uh, we got one. <laughs> It's, uh, there's this thing in grammar called a false cognate, or also called a false friend, kind of like Long Island iced teas. Like, you think they're your friend, they are not your friend. The oh, words, right. 
that, that sound like they should be the same, like restaurant is restaurant, okay? Right. Um, and, and a lot of food words in particular translated into English, um, but preservatif does not mean mm -hmm. preservative. And I was trying to say that there's too many preservatives in our food. So yeah, preservatif if you need to go overseas. Well, yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know, speaking of Paris, my, uh, my most recent issue of Hustler tells me that uh, Paris is called the city of love. So, oh, I well, missed that issue. Yeah, you missed yeah, that. All right, well, yeah. hey, I got a copy you can borrow. <laughs> Pages are sticky. So, how about you, Ashley? Did With you find uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you find true love while you were in Paris? Uh, yeah, yeah, he, uh, it's cheese. Oh, sorry, no, Ashley's uh, husband is in the he audience. Is in the audience. So. Uh, yes, my husband and I had been dating. We had just started getting very serious, and right when I was moving overseas, and he told me that he was going to come with me, and we hadn't even talked about moving in together or you know. So he tells you anything. that he's in love with you. Yeah. You're moving across the continent. Yeah, pretty okay. much. Yeah, he sells his car at the airport and gets on a plane, goes to France, and uh, we agreed to meet at this apartment in Paris. And I got really, really nervous because he wasn't showing up, and I was scared, and I thought the plane had crashed, and I was never going to see him again, and I threw it all away just for France. And um, then... I walk outside, I couldn't stand being in the apartment anymore, I walk to the metro station that he would be getting off at, and there he was, trying to use payphones, I don't know if you're old enough to remember payphones, well, hey. and, uh, <laughs> and, and we had that classic, like, drop the baggage, run to each other, did everything sort of slow down and, and music yeah, musicians was, were playing yeah, and everything? People were playing Freebird. It was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and your husband's here tonight too, he right? Let, yeah. Hey, why don't you stand up so yeah. we can uh, show us your biceps? You know, give you a round of applause. Eh? <laughs> this man traveled to France to marry Ashley. And I would say after the interview, that's a short distance. Yeah. <laughs> he told me when we when I got there though. He asked me if my shampoo was cheese scented. Oh, yeah. Apparently was really eating that much cheese. Well, Ashley, you've accomplished a lot of things. You've interviewed really great people. You're continuing to produce and co-host one of the best shows on public radio. What's next for Ashley Thornburg? <laughs> um, I was going to start a, a late night talk show at the uh, Minot parking garage. Oh, I yeah. Was, yeah, I was sick of that hey, well, Let me you. tell you, that's a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you guys need another gig? Do you guys want to come join the show? Yeah. Hey. Well, Ashley <laughs> Thornburg, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, what a great guest, Ashley Thornburg, everybody. Don't forget to tune in to Prairie Public's Radio Main Street every day at 3 and 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. It's Thanks for being on the show. Wow, excellent. And let me tell you, from the interview that Sean Ann and I had with Ashley, there is no better interviewer than Ashley Thornberry. So, check it out, Miles. Goodnight Live has really started to pay off for me. Get it? Yeah, I mean, Austin, really? <laughs> Goodnight Live's paying off? Yeah. Okay. So, I've even been getting fan mail. How about you, buddy? Any cards or letters rolling into you? No? You're getting fan mail? Oh, man, that is so cool. I want, I want fan mail. Hey, stick with me, buddy, and you'll get to carry my mail someday. Really? Any... 
Anyways. We're yelling things out now. Yeah, that's what we're doing. All right. Anyways, I thought it would be fun to take a look at some of the letters that we've been getting at this show. hell this first one is it what is that it must have come via pony express it looks like it came from the Tony, stone age it's literally some cowhide with speaker wire holding this thing together i think fred flintstone made that for you yeah it says uh sorry i didn't have any envelopes with a smiley face <laughs> all right uh dear good night live Thanks for having me on your first show. However, seeing what the show has turned into, I respectfully rescind my appearance. Sincerely, Walter Peel. Wow. Um, and then it also says, uh, color outside the lines, goddammit. And it says, uh, P.S. Jake, you smartass. Did your brother Matthew ever get to see a vagina? I don't know, he's here somewhere, what do you guys think? If anybody wants to make their charitable contributions for the year, there's still time. But uh, first of all, no he has not. And second of all, you can't rescind your appearance any more than I can rescind the $3,000 I spent on one of your weird ass finger painted horse pictures. All right, letter number two. Hey, good night live. We're big fans of the show. All right. We can always count on your audience to keep us busy at the end of the night. From your friends, Minot Police Department. Hey, uh, take a lift home, folks. Whoa. And uh, hey, that's cool. Just don't snoop around the band after the show and uh, stay away from Miles' guitar case. What? All right. Uh, dear Mr. Thrillkill, I'm happy to report your gonorrhea tests are finally coming back negative. Keep up the good work. Dr. B.J. Hardick, supervisor, first district health unit. Wait, how the hell did a letter from my doctor get in my fan mail? That is a HIPAA violation, and once my lawyer sobers up, oh, oh, you'll be hearing from her. Is your doctor named BJ Hardick? Hey, you can't choose your name. <laughs> but you can choose your Hardick, right? <laughs> Some people can. All right, so, um, what the hell? Damn, how did all these ballots get in here? Trump. Trump, Trump, How many you Trump, have? holy shit, god damn, how come there's not one for Biden's tucked in here, <laughs> and how the hell did all these ballots get in here, did Kamala Harris take over our mail route, <laughs> all right, here we go, to whom it may concern, please cease and desist from further shows, you're giving us a bad name, Sincerely, Kimmel and Fallon and Colbert and Myers and Corden and Conan and Carla Burbage. Carla Burbage? Wow. Carla Burbage, why are you coming in so hot? Come on, damn. Well, hey, Carla, let's see if we got letters from anybody relevant. All right, next letter. Now, this one's kind of hard to read. You're mean to me, Oli Larson, <laughs> sent from LeapFrog. <laughs> nope, still no letters from anyone relevant. <laughs> On to the next one. Dear Jake, my name is Cameron. <laughs> Yours truly, Kevin. <laughs> well, I don't know why this person would think I know who the fuck they are. <laughs> still no one relevant. Um, oh man, shoot. Dear Jake, I've been having trouble with the ladies. 
and I'm wondering if you can tell me what I can do to improve my moves. Your friend, Anthony, the Hitman Mauler. <laughs> Anthony, uh, why don't you just stand up here and show us your little dance moves or something? Let's, do you guys want to see Anthony's moves? All right. I don't see anything wrong with those moves. But, but Anthony, I got to tell you. I got to tell you, Anthony, listen to me, kid. Girls who like musicians are fucking crazy, all right? The first thing you should do is learn how to moonwalk, no. The first thing you should do is stop playing the bass and then promptly quit hanging out with Miles. And uh, while we're on the topic, Miles, uh, why don't you get some friends your own age? All right, uh, this next one here is uh, kind of hard to read. It's, it's not even a letter. I mean, what the hell is this? It's just a picture. Jesus. Uh, maybe it's on the back. No, shit, you're right. Um, hi, Jake. You are the best talk show host that has ever lived that I've seen. And, and I'll bet you're a really good best friend. My favorite part of the show is when you and Miles are friends. You're awesome. You're the best, Niles Jarsham. Hey, uh, well, Miles, it uh, looks like somebody wants your spot. I'll kill him! Miles, didn't you write this? No. no. Really? No. no. Not no, even a little bit? Me. No, it wasn't me. Yeah, okay. All right. Love you too, man. No, uh, love you too, I guess. Uh -huh. All right. So, dear Jake, I had a really good time last Saturday night. And I've been trying to get a hold of you ever since. I texted you a few times. I emailed you too. I called your cell and I called your work and I even faxed you. But I never heard back from you. I even stopped by your house a couple days ago, but your dog barked at me in a real mean way and scared me away. Anyways, like I said, I had a really good time last Saturday night, especially after bar close. But I, uh, I left my Merkin at your house, and I just really need to get that back. So uh, let me know when I can pick that up, okay? XO, 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 Brittany from Trapper's Lounge. Hmm. Informative. Hmm. Uh, what the heck is a Merkin, Jake? You know, Miles, I've got no earthly idea, but I do know someone who can explain it to all of us. Dr. Tangere, come on out here. Thing on. A merkin, a woman's pubic wig, what the dates to the 1450s, originally worn by sex workers to cover up signs of disease or after shaving pubic hair to get rid of lice. Now, often worn in nude scenes on stage and screen. Yikes. Jake, did you sleep with a girl who wears a... And that's why we pay her the big bucks. Dr. Tangere, everybody! Well, how about we pick up where we left off in our skitcom? Have no doubt about it, folks. Thanks to me, the team had a lot of fun at the escape point. 
That place is awesome, by the way, and a huge thank you to them for putting up with all of our bullshit. Band strikes up to clap for a skate point. Oh, that's... Ooh, skate point! <laughs> uh, guys, this isn't good. I, I had a bad experience once in a, in a tight space, and now <laughs> I get a little nervous in confined spaces. <laughs> Are there even snacks in here? This is bullshit, you guys. When this prick said team building, I thought we'd be getting a massage, not setting ourselves up into some trip into Jake's damaged psyche. And I thought Jonah was the only one who made decisions without caring about the rest of us. Un-fucking-real. Hey team, I personally customized this escape room just for you. And when I say personally customized, I mean I paid my assistant $7 an hour to do it. Anyways, for your first clue, look for something that flies without wings. How long is this gonna take? It's already been three minutes. That's it! Time flies, but it doesn't have wings. We're team building already! Look, I already got the first clue. And it's about Jake. This is awesome! We can do this. I know all about Jake. Uh, his favorite color is brown, his favorite beer is Old Mill, uh, his favorite song is Hen House, and uh, his favorite belt buckle is the Mutton Busting Channel. Miles, your bromance with Jake is disgusting, and nobody here gives a shit about building a team. Are we really locked in here? <sighs> John Ann, you make the snacks. Where are the snacks? Well, where are they? <sighs> Jake fucking Thralkill lured me here? to solve clues about him? No, not a chance. Rogan's dropping a new podcast today and I cannot miss Joe teaching old Bill Clinton how to inhale. You know, the point of this exercise was to bring the team closer together, but the real pleasure is in torturing executive producer Joan Alanto. It's really quite satisfying. Yeah. I'm not interested in learning anything about Jake until he's my client for tax evasion. Does he really think that knowing him better will make us like him better? This is asinine. Come on, Sean Ann. We can solve this together. We got this. And maybe when we're done, you could even join me and Jake's team. Actually, Miles, you had me at problem solving. Read that clue, you little fucker baby. All right. The code you need is easy to read. The buckles of a star added to a fancy car. Wrapped around the year of everyone's favorite beer, we'll open the lock beneath the gear. Here. Okay, I got this. 37 belt buckles in Jake's collection. Add that to a low end 2018 Beamer. That's 2055 and the first year of Old Mill was 1849. That's 20184955. I was told there'd be no math. Just open the lock. Bam! That's one down. Let's get this shit done and get out of here. My check liver light is on. Yeah! All right, patience is key. No! No! This needs to stop. Miles, quit doing everything Jake tells you to. Jonah, when you conned me into being part of this shit show, you didn't mention anything about listening to egotistical nobodies. Besides you, anyway. The walls are really closing in on me, guys. I mean, this is just like that time in the third grade when the teacher stuffed me in a cardboard box because I kept sneaking off to the lunchroom. <sighs> this is your fault. No, you're supposed to be in charge, Jonah. How could you do this to me? No, Derek. This is what happens when I let Jake think he's in charge and when you fuckers encourage his delusional boss fantasies. Oh, wait! Miles, did that clue say anything about food? 
Well... No. <laughs> Just read the clue, Miles. I'll figure it out before poor Derek here dies of starvation. I mean, we've been in here five whole minutes. Okay, well, it's a good thing I memorized it then before Jonah poo pooed it. <clears throat> Patience is key to learn about me, and watching plants grow is the best way I know. You know, Jake may take all my jokes, but he can't take my Basil Haydens. <sighs> Figures. The one time, Terry girl, that your booze-addled brain could actually help us, and you're totally worthless. What, are you scared we might steal your lame jokes? At least people want to steal the jokes that I write. The only thing that people want to steal from you are people like Sean Ann and I, who keep this ship floating and funny. Fine, I'll resort to eating a salad. Jesus. Derek, great work. This team gets stronger with every clue. We'd be even stronger if Terry and Jonah would play along. Listen, you're not my bastard stepchildren or my dog, so I'm not required to play along with anything here. In fact, you guys don't even pay me. Why did I think it was a good idea to come here? Because, Terry girl, the only good ideas you get to be a part of are the ones I give you. Hey, I think that's Jake's lake cabin in that picture. Oh, but this is the lock. Not even close, Miles. You've never even been to my lake cabin, buddy. I'd never invite any of these fuckers to my lake cabin. Especially you, Vodka Mike. No means no, Daddy. I think I've got the next clue. Miles, if you read one more goddamn clue about Jake Thrillkill, I'm gonna Yoko Ono your band with the Night Moose. Team building at its finest. Not helpful, Jonah. Derek over here is starting to hallucinate. Terry brought the big flask today, and Miles and I seem to be the only ones working to get us out of here. Listen, Sean Ann. I want out of here just as bad as the rest of you guys, but I will not pander to that belt buckled bimbo. Fine. Miles and I will figure everything out. Read the clue, buddy. Okay. I don't answer to you, you only answer to me. That one's not in the Jake Thrill Kill employee handbook. Miles, you're the only one that read that stupid handbook. Just got the revisions done on version 19.2a. Here, let that soak in, buddy. Does the handbook say anything about lunch breaks? We don't need the handbook to figure this out. I can't be the only one Jake calls late at night and reads his resume to. No, you're just the only one foolish enough to pick up when he calls. You know, Jake called me last month too, really, really late. I listened until he started crying about his taxes. That never happened? Because I don't cry. Proof yet again that lawyers are to never be trusted, especially red-headed ambulance chasers with a win rate of 23%. Wait a minute, it's the phone. Hello? Congratulations, you've made it to the final clue. Well done, Sean Ann. I can always count on you to be the smartest person in the room. Sean Ann, give me that phone. I'm gonna call Night Train. <laughs> 852 5433 Night Train! No! They didn't pay for a plug! Derek, if this goes much longer, I'm eating you first. Listen here, you egotistical son of a bitch. Open that door right now. Well, Jonah, if you want to get out of there, you're just gonna have to play along. God damn it, Thralkill. Just tell me your stupid clue. Are you ready, Jonah? I had a dream. You built a team. But what a surprise to me. The day we became a family. Oh, I've got this. Good, because I'm on my last flask and my last nerve. Derek! 
For the love of God, snap out of it, man. We've only been in here 15 minutes. Ugh. What happened to dominance? What's my safe word? Guys, the answer is 11-16-19, the date of our first show. It's, something isn't working. Uh, hang on, let me try. Fucking moron, Jesus Christ, it's a lot. How do you remember a date without a phone in your hand? 16, 19. Um, mm -hmm. you broke it. You fucking broke it. Jake Thrawkill, get your ass in here and fix this. Something isn't working. And if you can't fix it, get Cameron the intern to do it for you. Wait, get who to fix it? Now hang on, I'll be right in. Hey, you guys did it! <laughs> Pizza, here I come! Wait! Well, you solved all the clues. Fun times, right guys? Well, well, well. Look who's down here with the little people. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, maybe it wasn't fun for everyone. And, uh, someone please remind me to feed Derek before we're taking him anywhere ever again. We did feed Derek. I mean, yeah, I mean, seriously. Magic City Hoagies catered our whole 14 hour shoot, and they gave us four huge trays with all, uh, huge trays of sandwiches with all the fixing. Thanks, guys. And I ate all the leftovers when I got home that night. Yeah. Hey. Well, it's a night of first here, at, here on our stage. As some of you may know, Goodnight Live has been hosting comedy open mic nights around Minot. And we've discovered that this town is full of hilarious, talented people. And some of them aren't even involved in this show. Tonight, we've invited one of those funny people to join us on stage. There are a few things that our next performer is sure of. And one of them is that he'll make a joke about anything, which is good because he always seems to find himself in interesting situations. Well, kind of like being on this show. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm good night live welcome to Minot's own Kyle Erickson. The 
Did you guys ever have to take the military aptitude test in high school? Get this, I did too. My argument was that I wouldn't want to be in any army that would have me because we wouldn't win a war ever. My teacher told me to shut the hell up and I took it. I didn't think anything of it. A couple weeks go by and I get a call from my army recruiter. He, he said he wanted to visit with me about my opportunities in the US military. I told him, buddy, there are none. But he insisted, and before I could tell him about all of this, he told me it would be by later that week. Um, a couple days later, he stopped over and knocked on the door, and I've never seen so many emotions visually expressed on the man's face before. He went from embarrassed to laughter, and then shame. <laughs> he sheepishly handed me my U.S. Army lanyard and drove away. <laughs> okay, now wait a second. What if I did join the military? Picture this. It's the Middle East. Helicopters are raining all around. Fortunate sun is playing in the background. All of a sudden, a helicopter that's a little bit shorter then the rest comes over and lands. A blind guy with a walking stick comes out. A lady, got, a lady with a guard slash attack dog gets out. The back flies open. I scream out in my weaponized wheelchair. You heard of the A team. This is the ADA team. <laughs> I didn't either. A few, year, a few years ago, I, were, I lived within walking distance of the state fit wall. Okay, it wasn't within walking distance for me, but you know what I mean? Anyway, I lived close to the state fairgrounds. One night, I was tasked with getting my inebriated brother home. About halfway there, we see uh, cop lights. To this day, I have no idea how my drunken brain came up with this, but I said, act like you're mentally challenged. <laughs> so, picture this, we have Super Trooper. Talks. I'm trying to talk my way out of a ticket with the Super Trooper, and my, and my brother is sitting there doing his best for his gun. Um, a while in college, I, I used to live in Fargo, and somehow I ended up like five miles from my apartment uh, one night after drinking. Apparently, people don't like walking like a creepy guy in a wheelchair roaming around in the neighborhood. So I got the cops call on me. Oh. The, the poor policeman was so upset when he showed up and he couldn't take me in because he couldn't fit my wheelchair into his squad car. <laughs> and then the poor guy had to walk my happy ass home. <laughs> the only way I found out is because I found a receipt in my pocket the next morning while I was, on, while I was at breakfast with my parents. <sighs> Got you. And, I got a dog recently, but she likes kids. She likes a certain kind of kids. She likes little girls. Imagine you're a young mother with daughters, and you see this creepy guy in a wheelchair dragged by this dog up to your little kid. I'm, I say I'm creepy because I have the worst facial hair on four wheels. 
I did this pretty clear because I don't have a chin. So if, I, if I'm clean shaven, I look like my parents are related. My, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> See, I didn't think that would go over well. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so, I'm always worried with them out, when I'm out with this dog and she tries to go up to little girls that I look like the, a guy that had a conversation with Chris Hansen that ended up with me getting tackled by a cop dressed like a bush. I will say this about my dog, she does help me pick up dates. Um, one time I was out with this girl thanks to my dog and we were at a bar, in fact I think it was the out, out on the dance floor and everybody thought she was my nurse. <laughs> She kept hearing, oh, it's so nice that you're on pu you have him out in public, and yada, yada, yada. Then, she, because she's a smart ass like I am, she then proceeded to do something that I am fairly certain would violate all sort of HIPAA laws. <laughs> they, I think I've talked long enough. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Kyle Erickson, everybody. Kyle, that was great. Thank you so much for being on the Good Night Live stage. Thank you so much. Hey, you got chops, kids. Stick with it, all right? Kyle fucking Erickson, everybody. Drinking in old Milwaukee with all of us. having a blast being here in this great rock and roll nightclub. How about you guys? Who's ready for Dr. Eric Anderson to come back up here for another jam? Dr. Erickson and company, it looks like. What do we got going on here? Can somebody give uh, Dr. Anderson a mic to explain what we're going to witness? Hello to all of you. Yeah, one back here. We have a cello quartet on the stage right now. That means four. Miles has been practicing that line all week. I was told there'd be no math. I was told that. Get ready to get your faces melted, guys. Seriously, this is ridiculous. And you know...
by Miles or sit somewhere we get you a mic for a second. Yeah, if that reaches, go have a seat. We got some questions for you. Wow. 
Wow. Dr. Anderson, that was incredible. And even more incredible than that, we just want to give you a shout out for all the work that you do with Community Rocks. That is an excellent annual rock and roll extravaganza that has raised more than $250,000 for local nonprofit organizations. Let's hear it for Eric Anderson. Dr. Anderson, you've been in Minot since about 2003. Tell us a little bit about you know, what made you want to bring this Community Rocks event to Minot. Um, well, what, like I've said many times today, it's like I cannot wait to play Freebird. I've wanted to play Freebird since I was like 12 years old. I heard that. I listened to it on repeat, you know, throughout uh, doing calculus homework in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And so this is a this is a style of music that's really important to me. It's it's part of my past. It's you know I liked it a lot before I liked classical music. Mm -hmm. And so you know just I, I was talking with a business colleague, Andy Birch. Mm -hmm. And we just thought, hey, why can't we bring symphonic music and rock and roll together and raise the money for the community of Minot? And, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the community has been really receptive. And like you say, we've been pretty, pretty successful so far. Looking forward to more. Well, excellent. Well, I know that I love rock and roll. It's a little bit harder to get, for me to get to the symphony. What can you tell somebody like me about how to get to the symphony and appreciate it? Well, I think Wynton Marsalis, who's an important jazz educator, he said, he, he said it really well. Um, it's a style of music that doesn't come to you. You have to go to it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a lot more familiar than most people give it credit for because it's part of all of the movie soundtracks, the TV soundtracks, video game soundtracks, classical music or art music that's you know composed. Even most of the stuff that's composed today um, is often with symphonic backing. And it's, it's a sound that all of us know. So I, I would say just listen. Dive in, listen, and don't be afraid to not know. It's, it's a style of music that's supposed to be better the 30th time you hear it than the first. Yep. And so it may not get that initial, I love this, but if you give it time and you talk to people who know the style and, and you learn more about it, it's awesome. Well, Dr. Anderson, you are absolutely incredible up here tonight. It's a blast to have you playing with your children up here. And whoever these cello players, they are incredible too. Let's hear it for Dr. Eric Anderson. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for everything you do for the community. Thank you so much. Amazing. Amazing. Oh. Holy. I almost missed my chair there. Well, should we see how our escape point adventure wrapped up? But before we play our final segment, we have to give a big shout out to Adam Dias of Dias Media. Yes. And to Carson and Dave from DNN Cinematics. And thank you so much to the Noble Inn for providing lodging for Carson and Dave. They needed a rest after trying to make us look good all day. These talented professionals took our script from paper to screen, and their work is absolutely amazing. Bravo, gentlemen, and thank you. Now. It is time to address the elephant in the room. What's the elephant in the room? Over the last few weeks, many of you have asked us why we haven't released the rebroadcast of the Good Night Live yeah, Sean what's Sitma up, roast. What's up with that? Well, spoiler alert, you're about to find out. This is what happens, okay. Jake, you arranged this disaster. Get us the hell out of here. I think it's cool. It's like a lock-in sleepover, but without the snacks, or the video games, or the fun. But at least we're here together. Get. Me. Out of here. God. Thralkiel, this is why you're not the ideas guy. Never try to be the ideas guy again. That's my job. Yeah, about that. Technically, this wasn't even my idea. What? Whose dumbass idea was it? 
So I was having coffee with Mayor Sitma the other day and he wanted to do something nice for our team. So he suggested this team building exercise. Are you fucking kidding me? You listen to that creep? Shit. I spent my mayor coin on condoms in the bathroom at the barley pop. Hello, Mr. Mayor. What can we do for you today? Why, hello. See, I left my cigar torch lighter on the set of the Good Night Live last weekend. They told me that it was here, and I could just stop by and let myself in. Okay, sure. Let yourself in. Ooh, the Good Night Live roast. Well, that's never gonna see the light of day. Oops. What the fuck? Is that my creative team? Oh my god, I must be in hell. Those would be the first voices I would hear if I was in hell. Oh. Fucking interns can't hold their liquor. You owe me a bottle. One of these rooms has got to be the bathroom. Boy, they weren't fucking around when they said escape room. Holy shit! Fuck the light? Is that you? Christ almighty, didn't any of you imbeciles try to at least open the door? Well, we're out, so beer's on me? No, I've had my fill of thrall kill today. You might have your fill, but I'm finally empty. Let's get a beer. Wait up, fools. Dr. Tanqueray is coming with you. Well, buddy, I'm sorry this exercise didn't build the team. Are you coming, Jake? Yeah, Miles, I'm coming. All right, okay, so the escape room was maybe not my best idea, but I will see you all next week, Wednesday, for Creative at nine o'clock. Creative starts at eight. You know, hell's not so bad. Sure beats hanging out with those pricks. Now I'm curious, how many people out there would binge that if it was a Netflix series? I mean, is there a Netflix agent in the house? Hulu? Uh, what's that, cams only or whatever? <laughs>
Only fans? Only fans. Yeah, you know a little bit about that, don't you, bud? <laughs> well, hey, that's our show, folks. As always, we have so much fun bringing it to you. We're so grateful for all your support. You are the greatest audience ever, and we've got a big favor to ask. We want you to be a part of our end of the show family photo. So stand up, gather round, and on the count of three, we're gonna shout goodnight live as soon as these slow motherfuckers get up here. Thank you. All right, everybody slide in so Lindsay can take our picture. Hey. Get over here, come on. These people got places to be. <laughs> Hurry up, Night Moose. All right, on three. One, two, three. Good night, live. All right, one more, because. All right, make sure to keep up with us on Facebook and Instagram, and check out our website, www.goodnightlive.com, where you can see all of our shows, skits and bits, and buy our merch. But hey, why not just get your Good Night Live merch right here, right now, and we'll even autograph it for you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you for coming to Good Night Live, and good night, my night. Yeah.